Cosmic here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about Grand Archive. Now, I got to be fully transparent up front. Yes, I have been following the game for a year. I had a lot of negative things to say about it. And a lot of this video might honestly just be motivated by the fact that Flesh and Blood did a product so bad by comparison. And Weaves of the Shore, which, by the way, still hate that name, but Weaves of the Shore did something so right that I felt it was finally time to give it a chance and look into it in a little bit more detail. So if you're unfamiliar of what that was, it is the Recollection series, which is meant to be like an advanced starter deck. Bondi is really great at doing this and they've done multiple products and it's really a great way to onboard a new player while usually offering a little bit more swag and a little bit more than just your 15 or $10 starter deck, but you know, it comes with sleeves, it has this deck box and I gotta say they really hyped up the deck, the deck box because of the artwork that's on the inside, which is which is great don't get me wrong the the artwork that they have is great the the deck itself a lot of positive things to say but the magnets are really kind of hit or miss for me and the itself is just not as functional as like so you know that is a little bit of a miss it's not a perfect product don't get me wrong but it is a huge step in the right direction compared to some other products what we've seen with flesh and blood so with that, I want to just do a unboxing video. I am going to be spending a little bit of time playing out the game, really diving more into the local meta. And I actually did find out that True Champion Gaming is my local. So if you know Grand Archive, you know how big of a deal that is. And well, I got a month to kill between now and kind of the next big thing, waiting for Worlds Beyond and kind of the next thing that I want to focus on content wise. So I figured why not open a couple boxes. But however, as I mentioned, that is not without having a couple negative things to say as well, but it's not all bad. I think there are some good changes coming. So kind of where was I on Grand Archive at launch and kind of what taken has taken me so long to do a proper video on it. So. I was very aware of this card game during the Kickstarter. However, for those that remember, before they changed it, to be fair, because I follow a lot of games, if you follow me on Twitter, way more active about all the various games I follow there, but they were all in on the NFT train, which obviously I was not a big fan of. I have a lot of friends who are artists. They were really trying to, you know, add some value in a not great way that I just didn't want to support. So uh, again, we're just gonna be going through and showing off some of the artwork here and kind of going over a couple cards if I get to them. But overall, the, the big thing about the Kickstarter is that it just had major sketch vibes and I just wasn't about it. Fast forward to the, uh, oh, and actually just starting off with a ultra rare right away, Atmos. Um, fast forward to set one being launched. I honestly didn't like it. Uh, you know, I, to be fully again, transparent, I'm just going to be, this is probably the most like just off the cuff, honest video you're going to get out of me. And probably for a while that I have on the channel, obviously I was playing battle spirits saga at the time. And if you talk to people who actually dug into the set in my last 10 years of trading card games, it is sincerely one of the best set ones that we have ever, um, oh, we had foils. We'll get back to that in a minute. Um, it was one of the best set ones that we have ever had in a trading card game, period. Now, yes, that was ruined very quickly by things like Axe Spider and the Axe Spider Depths format that followed, namely with EX01 and Smag uh, and the elements breaking it, but uh, it was a very good set one. However, Grand Archive did not have a good set one, in my opinion. I think that the design choice that they had overall fell very flat. A lot of the RNG, because they didn't have a lot of things with floating memory, which, again, I won't get too much into how to play, but basically you have to roll a dice and lose a card uh, at random, which is never fun. But they have come a long way in kind of fixing that issue and having floating memory on good cards. But how much does that change the gameplay overall and kind of where things are at today? Honestly, I'll have to give it a go and see how I feel about it because I have looked through the Sylvie deck and that is the slime deck or the other one that the other recollection deck they just did. And it was uh, actually looking pretty good and kind of fixed the direction uh, for a lot of issues that I had with the game. So the other part I mentioned here is that I was uh, a big fan of Flesh and Blood. I played a lot of Flesh and Blood for a bit. I helped Chain get Living Legend. I'm very interested in more of that kind of class style or hero style gameplay and having a lot of cards that kind of blend together however one of the other issues that i take personally with grand archive is that you might have and i was hoping to find one of these heroes eventually but we'll uh get one of them out of the packs is you'll have a hero that'll be like oh i'm an assassin i'm super cool i do all this stuff who are uh, uh, sr excuse me not you are i have all this kind of cloak from the shadows all this cool stuff with being stealthy and whatnot and then you play a bunch of water spells 
like it's just a complete immersion break for me and i know that there's gonna be some people be like oh well in DD or like in baldur's gate you can cross class and all this stuff but again keep in mind oh there we go so it's ex perfect example an assassin human so if you look at some of the decks that have done well you know you got this very clear assassin theme on it very much want to be like uh from the shadows flesh and blood has really done this well there's actually a, uh, another card game on kickstarter called warlord that really leans into that that aesthetic very well and leads into those classes does a great job at it and in grand archive you pick one of three elements like fire wind and water and that's its own issue which i may or may not get into this video like i said i could have a whole other design video discussion i may or may not do but at least from a flavor standpoint, an immersion standpoint, I really want to see more of the assassin flavor come out and have more of that strike from the shadows feel. Now, and again, from this set, from set four, the one we're opening right now, I think they have done a fantastic job at leaning more into kind of that hero design and really making them feel unique. But if you look a lot at a lot of these champion deck lists, you would expect to see things like uh, poisons and traps and ranger abilities, right? And you don't get that because of how the game is designed and at least how the cup first couple sets were at least put together. Now, I will say overall, so again, just a very pointed example, right? If you had a water-based uh, Tristan, you could play free Freezing Steel in your deck that has a mage spell uh, action, right? So it's like, suddenly I'm now an assassin casting a spell for whatever reason. And again, some people might not take as much of an issue with it, but at least for me, it, do, it did create break a little bit of the immersion and something that I felt was just a little, little out of context. Now, there is stuff that I wish they'd lean into more, like these class bonuses that reward you for making sure that you match the same type, but they are a bit limited from my experience um, looking at the first three sets. But again, this set did a really great job. And the other part I will say is that Grand Archive really didn't have a lot that made it feel unique by itself. That wasn't just a a cheap copy admittedly and again this is just all my opinion being very blunt about it that the game just felt very very like oh i see what flesh and blood is doing let us copy that like let us copy the csrs and okay well now we want to have a little bit of magic feel to it with the stack so one of the things that i do like about this game and they even like boasted on their website about having the you know an anime game with simple numbers and easy to learn and all that stuff with the western influence or whatever the actual slogan is that you know a lot of the attack powers are ones and twos instead of like 1000 and 2000 and i do to some degree think that makes it more approachable uh but ultimately it becomes a question of like you know how does the interaction work out there's another the level one tristana um how does that work out with like the fast and sl slow speeds and the various interactions that you would have and that's where the game i think really does do a good job at shining in terms of like they actually do have good amount of interaction and a lot more that really happens um, in this set too. I guess we are just going to be getting all of the, the guardian stuff now that I, uh, <laughs> that I was kind of smack talking, um, the set. And actually this one has a little bit as well. I'm not sure how much this is going to come through in the camera, but kind of one of the other, uh, negatives I will say is that a lot of the cards are pretty rough in terms of like how they're cut. And if I remember to put this in post, I'll put the image up here. I shared it on Twitter, but um, in my recollection boxes, a lot of the cards were damaged out of the box, out of the product. And that's from just either they were loosely in that box that they stored them in or just something that happened in print where the blades just weren't sharp enough. And to be fair, we have seen that in some other areas or some other card games. It's not like it's just Grand Archive that has that problem from time to time. But at least from a first impression standpoint, it did leave um, a little bit to be desired, uh, desired from a, hey, I really wish my, you know, cards weren't damaged sort of thing. So all that out of the way as, as we continue to just kind of rip through the packs here you know i want to get back to this foil right so we said they see that we opened a foil and we didn't really open another one um i think it's only one per box actually it might be two per box i forget now and we'll see as we go through but um another thing that i just am not a fan of is that grand archive took the approach of we want foils to be special and to a point i think that's fine I, they definitely want there to be more value in their boxes themselves and i get at least the initial decision of it but when you're coming from other games, especially like, we really got those back to back. Um, when you're coming from other Bondi games or just other games in general, you know, a foil per pack is pretty industry standard, I would say at this point. Like it's just something that you wanna have your uh, players feel like they're opening something a little bit special. So I will say from a overall box opening perspective or just the pack opening, right? Cause they opened the six packs from the two recollection starters first. Um, it did leave a little bit to be desired in just terms of like missing out on foils and not really having anything like that exciting to open. So um, one thing you'll you'll notice here too is that I will say again, I love the art. 
But you know, let's see if we even grab a common just to like really stick it home, right? There is also nothing that really makes us stand out. And I guess, you know, I could have grabbed the uh, ultra rare to, sure. Let's just make the, make this as stark of a comparison as possible, right? There is really nothing that stands out between these two cards. There, if you're just scanning through the packs and you're just going through, there's nothing here, right? Um, at least in some other games, you might have like a different frame. You might have foiling or texture like you have in Bondi games, things of that nature. But there's really nothing that makes us stand out unless you open a foil. And then it's very obvious that you have like the, the star design to it. And that's all great. However, I do wish that they had done a little bit of something just to make these stand out with a little bit more detail. But unfortunately, a lot of the card frames do look extremely similar which I think can be an area where they can improve on. And I do like the, the advanced elements and how that changes the borders a little bit. Um, and the way the game works is that those don't really come into play until uh, late game anyway. So that's a little harder to make them, you know, on all the cards instead of just like the neutral design, which takes the main focus. But it is something that I still hope that they will lean on in the future just to make a little bit of an improvement. So that said, okay, outside of uh, just talking a lot about the set design and obviously some other areas that I take issue with just from a design standpoint or card game standpoint. Um, you know, how are they from an organized play standpoint? And again, I'm going to start with the cons and talk, talk about the negatives very bluntly um, and then talk about some positives as well. Cause I just, I do want to make sure that it's not like just a, Hey, I'm just, you know, being negative to be negative, but at least I think there are some very fair critiques to make. So in case you missed it, they have decided that one of their three North American regionals, ooh, I guess that's another foil, um, one of their three North American regionals uh, for all the year. So they're, they're changing to a point-based system, which I checked with Cabe, and they're telling me it's not as bad as it seems on paper. Um, it should be still fairly easily qualified. But one of their main regionals is going to be uh, the same exact weekend as Gen Con. And that is such an astronomical thing failure of scheduling i don't even know where to begin and the the 10 years that i've been doing this and obviously much longer as a magic the gathering player before all this i simply cannot think of another time that a card game company has royally screwed up as big as weaves of the shore just has done that said there's obviously other regions they probably you know last minute decision got a good re rate on the venue whatever it might be Right, we have. I've talked about this a lot on Twitter. Ever since COVID, the prices of venues has just skyrocketed. They have not been working with people at all, and it has basically been just a hey. If you don't like it, too bad. This is the price, and someone else will will book it out. And that's why we're seeing so many issues with Bondi Regionals. Bushy Road um, has been more established, so they kind of have their network of regionals already placed. But it does leave a little bit to be desired when one of your major regionals is uh, unfortunately Gen Con weekend. And spoiler, I assume that, that regional is going to have very poor attendance because it's not even like, hey, we are putting our regional, you know, in California and Gen Con is happy in Indiana, right? No, it's it's literally Indiana, Indianapolis to Chicago. That That is just not a good spot to be whatsoever. So it's just like a proximity battle that you're automatically losing from the start. And that is just an automatic feel bad from, again, somebody who's trying to look at this game through a fresh lens, try to take a good approach and give them the benefit of the doubt on some of their planning. Now, the negative out, out of the way, at least for the immediate negative. Oh, my God. When I tell you that they did a fantastic job at Worlds, that was honestly the other thing that kind of grabbed my attention. I have not seen such a grand display and such a premiere celebration that they have that they were able to do for this game compared to a lot of other card games in the past. Now, don't get me wrong, Bush Road has some really great stuff. Bondi also did really well this past year with Bondi Card Game Fest, and I look forward to how they improve that and again in the next year. But from what I could see on Twitter and from what I could see or X, whatever, and from my friends that were there and, and sharing their you know stories on Facebook. It was truly a magical event and truly one of the best showcases, right, of celebrating the players, celebrating the game uh, that we have seen. And I hope that other companies will actually take note and, you know, upgrade their uh, their setups and, and figure out what else that they can do to kind of enhance the player's story and making sure that people feel celebrated when they're going to these events. So uh, we are coming up to the last pack of this first box. If this wants to zoom back in. So again, that's where I'll kind of go into the, you know, 
they did a really great job at celebrating their players. There was a keynote speech, which you can find on YouTube. There is uh, a roadmap that was given, even if the roadmap was um, not ideal <laughs> for, for again, the, the event that was happening. But I think it at least is a good stepping stone for, hey, the company is, you know, just celebrated one year. They're trying to get their their legs, uh, their feet on the ground sort of thing, get things rolling. And overall, you know, this uh, this set, from what I can tell, is sold out at the distributor level. And uh, Alchemist Revolution, I think is the name of the set. Set three, the one before this, is uh, apparently out and hopefully getting a reprint sometime in the future but there is no um you know word on that yet so one of the things that i struggle with is that yes there has been a lot of um you know growth overall from what we would see in the um from a market right so the facebook group like there's a lot of external factors that you can kind of look to in terms of where are people approaching the game and learning about it? And from the Facebook group, it does feel a little bit small. And this is kind of, I guess, going back into a negative, then back into a positive. You know, the game just doesn't feel like it's growing. Again, outside looking in, I don't hear things of like 500 person regionals. You know, they do host 10Ks, but ultimately it does fall a little flat in terms of what people are, you know, looking to and from the marketplace, right? So again, comparing this more to the flesh and blood because that's the approach that they want to take. I joined the market groups. I looked at like how fast high end stuff is moving um, and it has slowed down a little bit. It, it doesn't seem to have that same traction just yet as we've seen with other card games. So I love that the devs are pouring out their heart for this game. They're doing a lot of things that I would consider doing a, a good job and doing right by, but ultimately it doesn't seem like it's really caught on just yet. And again, for the people that I've talked to from a game perspective, I definitely think the lackluster sets are holding it back a little bit and Fractured Crown for those that don't know, Fractured Crown, the set two, was absolutely a tank of a set. Like, it was false gods bad for my Battle Spirits Saga friends out there. Like, it just dumpstered. It was an astronomical failure of a set. And then set three came out and didn't support anything in set one or set two. And it wanted to do its own thing. But it didn't have a card pool deep enough to have that kind of a set. So now we're getting to set four where they say, okay... We've learned from set one, two, and three. Here's where we're now getting a little bit more of the past support and kind of where things need to go from there. And finally, we can trend this in the right direction. So have to wait and see. You know, obviously, like it just recently launched. We have to wait and see what testing looks like and all that. But hopefully, we will see some good things come out of this set because, um, again, I love the artwork. I love the slime deck and kind of where that approach is. Go oh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, there is a CSR or like what is their max rarity uh, things. I guess let me just check back here for uh, rare. Uh, uncommon, uncommon. So, all right. Well, cool. This is like uh, like Bush Road and Japanese companies in general. They also went with like the gold stamp. This is meant to be their, you know, max one. I think this one's actually not even that expensive. Um, so this is a not great one to pull if I remember correctly, but um, I didn't even prepare sleeves because I really did not even... Uh, sure, here's a sleeve. Um, I was not expecting to get anything out of two loose boxes. So, uh, you know, beginner luck. We'll see how it goes. Like with Flesh and Blood, I got a, um, I got a first edition uh, library, which helped kickstart my collection. I think this is only like 50 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. But there are other ones that go for a lot higher price um, than that one. But hey, still really cool to open. Good to see it in person. Um, and yeah, I mean, like the gold stamping is... Now I can see a little bit closer really quick. Yeah, it, it does look like just pretty standard gold stamping for what we see, uh, you know, from like an industry standpoint. Um, and also the lettering up there. Um, but I don't think it's textured, actually. Now that I'm looking at this again, sorry, I'm kind of doing this. Oh, it has a very faint texture, actually. I don't think this is even going to come through in the camera. Nope. I mean, I guess you can see like the the raised texture, but like the, ba the background does have a pattern to it as well. Um, but... You know, that is something that they'll... Uh, there's other one, versions of it that I know that they do, but uh, kind of getting back on track here and just going through the rest of these packs. Um, and I totally forgot where I was even going with that. <laughs> now I did not expect to to open that. Ceremonial Storm, storm Blade. So, um, again, going back to uh, just kind of where their approach is at and kind of where they're learning from. Uh, again, I do think there's a lot of good things in this set. Uh, but it's all going to come down to where do things land from a power level and what does that mean for like future set design? You know, did they learn from the first year and the following sets will be better 
or will we ultimately get stuck in another rut with one of the you know future sets just not giving proper support right i think they're still trying to find their balance both in kind of case design class design like again as i mentioned i i do take a, a bit of an issue with hey my my hero is going to be an assassin oh wait but i just have all mage spells um in the deck that does feel a little bit bad but hopefully as they lean into more of the the class bonus side which i really really hope that they do i think that that's kind of where the game would lend itself uh to do a bit better kind of going forward um would have to wait and see where where it lands so again from a you know the artwork is gorgeous uh, they did a great job celebrating their player base but i do hope that we will get to see more um more of the design kind of en enrich and level up itself as we go on so i was hoping to find one of those balance cards that i mentioned um but i have to wait and see i guess it might have just been in the previous set and, and not in any of these or maybe i skipped over one but um balance is for so like as you're playing paying for stuff so like let's say this says three in the top you have to put three cards from your hand oh there's another foil face down into your memory and your memory is, is something that you will use to level up it's just a way to manage your hand as a resource and things of that nature but there is a thing called balance where if your hand size and memory is the same you get an additional effect and i think that's a really cool way to as i took mentioned earlier and, and take part with so we have oh a super rare Okay, I have no idea if that's going to be good or not, but um, super rares in this game are actually kind of expensive, oddly enough. So um, this might be considered a two-hit box then, and I think that was... Oh, you still get a rare as well, because it just takes a foil, so that's kind of cool. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Like, I'll check all the prices after the fact. Uh, but anyways, as I mentioned, I hope we get to see more of the class bonus stuff, because I think that's what really lets our class bonus and balance that's what really makes grand archive unique right if you've played enough trading card games just to be blunt like set one didn't feel special set two didn't feel that special set three a little bit better and now set four i think they're really starting to to catch their stride with it and i really hope we get to see more um of this design because again as someone who was like looking at getting back into flesh and blood for a month just to because you know miss fail looks looks absolutely gorgeous and again not that i'm the biggest fan of lss as of lately because i think they've just been making a ton of poor choices um and why i want to look at something else i was like you know what apparently we have one of the best locals i guess worldwide uh for this game and i don't have to go be an ambassador for something and spend all my time driving around and doing demos and stuff so i was like all right you know what we'll uh we'll have a look see where this this takes us and hopefully you know have some fun along the way if anything else i just love learning new card games and actually getting to play them so this is something that i am you know at least looking forward to on that side Oop, getting out of focus again I'm trying to go through the last couple packs here uh pretty quickly uh but i do wonder you know kind of where things will go from here from a overall balance perspective and you know like cleric i really love the idea like you brew these potions it feels super flavorful um, but part RNG, part card pool, like it just didn't get enough support. So man, I am really getting all those guys. Um, <laughs> there's a, uh, it's not, not called earth. What is it actually called in this game? Neos, um, earth element, right? Uh, advanced element, I should say is a guy from set three that I really like his design. It feels like more of a, you know, guardian build up your allies, uh, token strategy. So I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but I haven't seen any really good lists with him that people were like excited to play. So maybe this set will change that. But again, set three kind of, uh, fell really flat by itself at, okay, well, I am just, <laughs> we are going to get all the, uh, I, I clearly can tell what deck we're supposed to build, um, out of this pile <laughs> so far, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, the one thing I will say too, is, uh, this game needs more husbandos. So, oh, cool. Oh, I totally forgot. Um, have we not opened a fragment yet? Huh? Okay. So the other thing, um, that again, I'm trying not to get too much into the gameplay because hopefully you've seen already, but, um, at the start of the game, you pick a element, you reveal it, you draw seven cards, and that is your main element that you get to play. Um, in this set, they actually introduce a, I think it's glimpse six. So it's a scry six, draw six. Uh, so you draw one last card, but you get a spirit fragment, which is this token. And then at level three or higher, you get to draw a card. So you do get that card back. And this is, again, going back to what I really hope we see more of from this game as it continues to evolve. I get why dual cost heroes are so strong and our dual color heroes can be so strong and they open up more of the, of the uh, pool. But if there is a concern about the um, 
you know, the card pool being too accessible to some, then do it like Sylvie, where you just get all the uh, slimes of every element, but then you still have to lock your uh, magics to win, for example, right? Uh, because that's what you are at level three for the effect. Something of that nature, right? There's other ways to go around and balance it and still lean into kind of what makes this game or try to make this game uh, more special or stand out. So again, not to uh, probably harp on that a little bit too much, but I really do like the, the fact that this is kind of magic in the sense that you get a little bit of back. Man, it really wants me to build. There's also a mill deck. And if you know me, I love mill decks. Um, so I probably will build it just for fun because it was dirt cheap when I was looking at singles. Uh, but I don't think it's good. But there is a mill deck in case you are a mill enjoyer like myself, a little bit of a de degenerate. Um, and the character artwork is very, um, very nice. So <laughs> it's what I'll say. I'll probably go back here and throw up an image of it as well. But, you know, again, the artwork is really great. I would really love to see more of the... Uh, oh, there, there's an actual card that references uh, Glimpse. Let's see that goes. Oh, it just has the gather reminder text on it, which is uh, roll a d6, get a herb. Man, this really doesn't want to get in uh, focus. There we go. So going back to the, the initial thing where I was talking about the assassin, but oops, you're playing a mage. You know, if that's the case, I really hope we see more of the design space where, okay, you are an assassin, but you are now a dual role assassin where you get another element and there's very specific water cards that go with that assassin like, you know, a mist effect or something, some type of diversion effect for an assassin that would at least make sense and fit the overall theme of the character, right? No, not any of that. Oopsies, I uh, I threw a frost bolt at you, but I'm hiding from the shadows, right? Uh, again, probably just a mean thing. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of hate in the comments for talking about like the immersion standpoint, but it is some, there's my boy. There's my convoking slimes. I love these little guys so much. Um, I really hope we get to see more of that flavor design play out in future sets but again i think at least set four now the one that we're currently unboxing and going through is going to be putting in a good spot and kind of one of the other issues i guess i'll go back to um is that i did not care for the 60 card deck and four ofs because if you've been playing trading card games long enough you know that that is just the most inconsistent option that you can go for and it can detract from the player experience. However, they have now gone to the side of if you've played, <laughs> if you've played or seen the Sylvie deck, they're like, hey, you know what? Here's 20 draw cards. We're sorry, you know, sort of thing. I think the 20 is a little bit of exaggeration. I think it's actually 12 off the top of my head. Um, and then there's like another four of that you would put in there. Sorry, draws or searchers to increase consistency. And that's kind of one of the downsides, I'll admit, is like you just have to run those cards because you don't want to be stuck in this world where you have a 60 card deck, but it is hyper inconsistent. Now on the other side of that red is maybe, or fire is maybe a little bit too consistent. And I think that consistency needs to be played out into the other elements, but we are at least seeing a, a bit more of the, you know, fairness coming around in the Sylvie deck. And they could certainly do one of the recollection starters. Ooh, there is another, oh, uh, this one is just a common foil charged alchemist. Did I miss a foil? Is that really only four foils? I'll have to go back and, and make sure I got everything. Um, hey, there! wow, these are ultra rares? Man, well, that kind of... I didn't realize these were ultra rares. Like, I guess, man, how do I feel about this? Um, <laughs> sorry, live reaction time, right? So this is a game piece that you only need one of each element to be fair but it has a very low pull rate. Um, yeah, my gut tells me that doesn't feel great. Uh, and especially because I haven't had a chance to test these. Like again, past TCG knowledge, my uh, I am assuming that all these are gonna like just power creep out the original uh, fragments because you get the extra card draw anyways. And like those opening turns matter the most. Like I feel like these are supposed to be really, really good. And of course I get fire after shit talking fire for being <laughs> too strong, but uh, man, yeah, being an ultra rare when you get like what one per two per box, I think. Um, I have to go back and look at the ratios, but yeah, I don't know. That doesn't feel good. Happy to get one, obviously, because I don't have to go buy that single now. But uh, I'd be very curious to see how much that actually goes for. And I'm gonna have to go back and do a bunch of uh, pricing, I guess, on as I'm going through this, uh, because prices are kind of high right now. And I don't know if that's because, um, again, going back to a positive. 
uh, the recollection decks because they did such a good job with a few minor complaints that I think it's actually doing a great job of getting people interested in the game and being like, oh, hey, if you were worried about, you know, paying $25 for dungeon guides or $50 for uh, GCRs and stuff like that, you know what, here's a nice little 40 or I guess $60, I think is what they were, uh, entry point to the game with a little bit better than a starter deck. Now, the one thing I will say is the sleeves were a nice touch. I appreciate that they were in there, like we see with Bondi card games and the advanced starter decks they've done. But when you put a $65 price tag on it, that does feel a little bit bad. Like I probably would have just skipped out on the sleeves, drop it down to 50. And I, I think that would have been just a much better price point uh, for players. And there's another SR. Again, that is more of a personal note, just trying to find a good price point. Because again, Bondi games, when they do their mega decks, advanced decks, etc., they're only $30. And I think from a power perspective, generally speaking, these are going to be on the same terms between the uh, recollection decks again and the like advanced stars from Bondi. But it the 65 does feel a little bit bad, if I'm being honest, even if it is a good price. But now they're even going for like 75 to 80. So Yes, I would recommend them, but at the same time with a little bit of a grain of salt because they are more expensive. So with that, that is our uh, kind of quick unboxing. We did get a Saudi and a foil uh, super rare, which I just really love that card, actually. That's gorgeous artwork. Um, so again, I, I want to I wanna be very clear here again towards the end of the video because I'm sure that I'm going to get some angry comments or people will just cherry pick certain parts of it. But overall, was not impressed, was not a fan of Grand Archive for quite honestly the first three sets and i think they have um you know come a long way since then and what really started to bring me around and have confidence in what they're doing is the world celebration was really great and these recollection decks and i guess just for the sake of in case anyone questions if i bought both literally i did buy both i i like spending money on card games apparently you know as, as it is um but I think they're at least going in a right direction. I think the set design from four is a lot better from where it was. And I really hope they can continue this trend. While I don't think that this game is going to really take off anytime soon, more than it has, as I mentioned, there has been some struggles in terms of, you know, how is the overall growth and adoption happening? But I do think the devs are finally getting into a good spot where I can finally say, I think it's worth checking out. Now, that opinion might change a month from now when I have more time to test set forward. Unfortunately, if I'm like, oh my God, this set's awful. It's not good, right? Who knows? We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But at least from a you know TCG veteran reading this set and looking at the spoilers overall and kind of how things have moved from set one to set four, I truly think Grand Archive is just a game that is going to need a deeper card pool before it really hits its stride, both from a development perspective and how unique, unique decks will feel in kind of reaching their goal and, and what they want to be doing. So with that, let me know your thoughts below. Um, and again, I'm going to go look up how much this card was because hopefully you can go buy me some dungeon guides um, and other cards that I need. But hey, we'll find out in, in, in pretty lucky pulls, all things considered from a two box special. But I'm just lucky like that when I open box, boxes for the channel, I guess. So who knows if this will be the first, last, or many more Grand Archive videos to see. Again, I'm very much just taking this month to see where things go. I'm very excited for Worlds Beyond, which is Shadow vs. Digital Client launching sometime in the summer. And then, of course, this fall with Union Arena is where I'll be spending a lot of my time in the near future. So with that, my friends, stay safe, stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.